this problem. Uh, anybody, anybody wants to tell me how to do this problem? Like in general, what do you have to do to solve this problem? What is what you have to do? Anybody there's to do it? Anybody there's to, to tell? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody? Nobody. Nobody. Okay, then I'll tell you. In this problem, as in all the problems in this, or most of the problems in this uh, section, the, the way you do when you when do, you are asked for the magnitude or the resultant of a, a series of forces, what you have to do, you have to decompose the forces in the rectangular components. In this problem, it's very easy because it's 2D, so you have to get the components in the X and Y direction. Once you have the components in the X and Y direction, you just add all the Xs, all the components in the X direction, then you add all the components <laughs> In, in x direction, then all the components in the y direction, and then th thus those summations are the components of the resultant. So here, very easy, very easy. Let's see. You have to, you have a, a, a force P, P. This force can be expressed as P, um, X, let's call it PX, I plus PY. J, and that's how you decompose all those forces. You probably are used to uh, Px equal to P cosine uh, theta, so P or something like that. Uh, this is true if you have the angle that the force makes with respect to the X axis, but that's not always the case. If, for example, in this case, you have this angle, Let's say you have this angle, then in this case, the component in the x direction will be P times the sine of the angle, right? So you have the component here, this will be Px. In this case, Px will be P cosine of 30 degrees. But if you have that angle alpha, let's in this case, we know that this angle is 60 degrees. If you know that this angle is 60, this angle is 60. You can say also that Px is equal to P sine 60 degrees. You don't necessarily have the angle that the, the, the force makes with the axis. You might have the complement of that angle so that you, instead of using cosine, you will use sine. All right. Okay, let's continue here. So for P, you will do here um, the component this is the x-axis. We always consider x positive to the right, right? So in this component is going in, in the opposite direction to the x positive, so it's a negative component. So you have to manually do here minus the magnitude is 128 and then cosine 30. And that multiplied by i, right? And then we have the component of P in the vertical direction. Let's do, let's call, let, let's see that one here. See, this will be PY. So that would be, and, and look, PY is also going down. So it's also negative. You have to put negative, you have to put it manually. So you have 128 sine of, sine of 30. J, any question about that? Any question about that? Everybody has cleared that, that step here? All right. So that will give you some number here so, and some number here. Any, anybody can do that, those operations for me, please? Anybody? 110.5. With a minus sign here, minus 128 times sine 30 equals 64J. All right. Okay, that's P. Now let's go for Q. Q will be equals to this cosine of this angle. So that Q is here 158. And this one is positive because the component, the component of the force Q 
is this one in the x direction. So it's going positive. So we have plus 158 cosine of the total angle here is 30 plus 15. So this angle is 45 i. And then the component on the y direction is, is this is the first q, the component, the y direction will be this component here. This will be q, y. So that will be minus because it's going down 158 sine of 45 j. Okay, anybody care for giving me these values or nobody? So I have to do it myself, right? 158 cosine 45, 111.72 i equals here u. And positive because the component in the x direction is this one right here going positive, right? 158 times sine 45. Oh, the same value because sine and cosine of 45 are the, is the same, right? So it would be the same value here, J. Okay, no questions there. Let's, let's, let's finish this quickly. This one is really easy. So now the S, the S force will be um, this 291, 291 cosine of 15 I plus, uh, minus, so I, I made a mistake here. This is minus, right? This is minus here. So let's fix that here. This is minus. Uh, and and the, the force S has also a negative component in the Y direction, it's going down. So that will be 291 sine of 15 degrees J. So those numbers will be 291 times cosine 15, that's 281.08 I minus, um, this will be sine of, Two hundred ninety-one times sine of fifteen degrees seventy-five point zero three zero point three one six j. We have the three forces with the with the components in the x and y direction. Let's let's make reduce the size a little here. So now we have to take the summation of all the components in the X direction and all the components in the Y direction. And those will be the X and Y components of the resultant. So the resultant in the direction of X will be this, these values here, uh, this plus this plus this, each one with the, with the corresponding sign. So it will be minus one, 10.85. Uh, plus 111.72 plus 281 points. What did I say? 181.08 equals. And the resultant in the y direction will be this value here plus this value here plus this value here with the sign, with the corresponding sign. So this, there will be minus 64. Is 64, is, oh yeah, 64. Um, minus 111.72 minus 75.316 equals, anybody did the summation of those? Two, 81.95251.04. So those are the components uh, of the resultant. And it says here, uh, I'll find the magnitude. Let's find the magnitude. 
So the magnitude, you get it by using Pythagorean theorem. So uh, uh, what we have so far is that we have the X axis and the Y axis. This is negative here. And we have a component in the S direction of 281. So something like this, 282. And another going down 251, something like this, 251. So the resultant will be this force here. This is the resultant. So the magnitude of the resultant will be a square root of 281.95 square plus 251.04 square. So the resultant is going to be equal to 377.51. So this will be 378 pounds, right? So that's, that's the magnitude. And the angle, the angle is, just, is direction measured clockwise from the positive axis. So this will be the positive axis. So clockwise will be like this. So let's call this one alpha will be tangent minus one of the, the vertical direction, the vertical distance here divided by the horizontal distance here, 251 divided by 280, well, actually 51.04 and 281.95. Remember five significant digits every time that you are doing intermediate calculations. So 251.04, divided by 281.95 equals our tangent of that 41. Since, since this is the final answer it will be 0.7 degrees. So this will be 41.7 degrees. All right, and that's it. Well, if I want to put this with my notation A, 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 B, 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 so it will be, um, Three seven eight four one seven. This will be the number that I have to put into the computer for the quiz, right? Okay, agree. Diana, the only one that is watching this. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's problem number one. Straightforward. No questions about this. <clears throat> Go for problem number two then. This one. How about this problem? <clears throat> the end of the coaxial cable AE is attached to the pole AB, which is strengthened, which is strengthened by the wires cable AC and AD. Knowing that the tension in the wire AD is 229, determine the components of the force exert on the pole at A. It means that at point A, the cable AD is applying force. So let's put it here, it will be this force. That will be the force. Let's call it, let's call it F. Let's call it F. So if I do a little diagram here, let me try to do a little diagram here, a little, a little larger. Um, I have a vertical force here. I'm gonna put some, some uh, axis here, X and, and Z. Like that. And then I will have the force. There will be something like this. I'm going to put the force all the way here to point B. Let's put it here. So I will have this, this line is like an auxiliary line that they put it there in order to give us the angle, the angle that this angle of 48 degrees like this 
we can consider that as like an, an intermediate, an intermediate the component that is going to help us uh, calculate the components. So, in this one. When you are working forces in 3D, the ideal situation is that you have the, the angles that uh, the force makes with each one of the axes, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you have different angles like this one right here. So this is the X axis, this is the C axis, and this is the Y axis here. So we do have, we do have this angle here, this angle 36, is what we can call alpha, 36 degrees. Is directly the angle that the, the force makes with the, with the vertical axis, with the, axis, with the x, with the y axis. So we, we can calculate that component, the component in the y direction, and let me draw it here, the component in the y direction will be this, this force here, right? that force will be F sub y, and we can find it directly like F y equals minus F cosine 36 degrees directly, right? All right, agree? Oh, now we don't have we don't have the angle that the force makes with the with the x or the c axis. So we have to to use the fact that we know these other angles. Let, let me put them here. This angle here is forty eight degrees. So and let me draw the other two components. The components on the on the x direction that will be this component. Uh, this component here. Actually, you probably understand that better if you do it like this. That will be the, the X component, right? And the C component will be this one right here. Right? So this will be F X and this will be F C. Let me put this, this auxiliary lines here so you see it better. And then we can put the, the, uh, the, the component in the C direction here. Uh, more or less like that. Okay, so you see how, how this FX is the same as this FX and this FZ is the same as this, as this FC. Is that, that clear for everybody? You see it? The, 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 the three components, then the three components of the force are this FX, FY, and FC is the same as this F, A, X, and F, C. Those are the three components of the force, right? Okay, so now if we, if we could find, let me put it here in a little, a little 
Okay, so we see it better. If we could find this force that we are going to call F prime, the purple one. So very easily we can find Fx and Fz by using the 48 degree angle, using the sine and the cosine of the 48 de degree angle. So we can find Fx and, F and Fz, right? So if we, we can find F prime as F sine of 36 degrees, right? You see it? You see it? Based on this angle of 36 degrees up here, F prime is equal to, let's put it here, F sine 36. Now, if you have F prime, then you can find Fx as F prime sine of 48 degrees. So that will be F prime, which is F sine of 36 sine of 48, right? You have it here F prime, so you just put it here, down here. And Fc will be F prime cosine of 48 degrees. So that will be equals to F prime is F sine 36 multiplied by cosine 48. And then there you have Fc and Fx, and you already have Fy. So there you have your three answers, right? You just need to replace the F, the F everywhere by whatever is given in your, in your statement. And you have the three solutions, this, this, and this. I'm not gonna do the, the numerical, the, the, the numbers, you can do that. Understood, any question? So sometimes you have to use, look, I have this, and I mentioned this in the video, you have this formula here, Fx, oops, Fx equals to F sine 36 times 48. This is not a formula that you have to learn, to, to learn by heart. It is because you were given this angle and this angle, and based on those angles, you apply the tricks that you know about sine and cosine to get this force down here, F prime, and based on that one, you get the other two components. And since you have this angle here with, with respect to the angle, then you can directly calculate it like that. So, so you have to be resourceful about this, the angles that are given to you and you use the sine and cosines to get the right components that you need, right? It's not that you're going to learn those formulas by heart because they change depending on the angles that are given to you. Um, another thing that I want to point out here is that um, be careful that when you use the angles like that, you have to manually assign the, the sign, the correct sign. In this case, the y, the y direction, the y component is negative. The x component is positive, so no problem about that. And the c component is positive also, so no problem about that. But it, it said this one component gives you the negative direction of the axis, you have to very careful put the minus sign yourself. If you are given the angle that the force makes with respect to the positive axis, then the cosine is going to give you the sign automatically. All right, which is never the case here. We'll probably see another example, another example uh, next. Uh, in which I can show you that maybe easier than in this problem. Any question about this one? No questions? I wish I have some uh, proof of life of the guys that are here because nobody says anything. Nobody shows signs of life. I hope you guys are alive and kicking. Let's go to problem three. This is problem three. Well, in this, in this problem two, you have the components. The problem is only asking you for the components. So you get the components, so then you have it, that's it. 
But let's say this is one force that you need to get the resultant of summation of this force plus other force. Well, you have the components and then you will have to get the components of the other forces. And then you will have to add all the X components with all the Y components and all the Z components in order to get the, 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 the rectangular components of the final result, right? In this case it was very simple, just find the components of the force F, that was simple. Okay, let's go back to problem. Let's go now to problem three. Let's see, this is, you have to get the summation of these three forces. You have to add three forces, very similar to the first problem, but this one is in 3D. So same thing, you have to find the components of each force and then you add in the direction, in the specific direction. Let's start by the force um, P. P. In this case, we don't have angles but we have some dimensions. So based on those dimensions, you have to find the components that are uh, required here. So let's start for force P. P. You are given these three, three and four. So this is a three, four, five triangle. So this distance is five. You, you, you guys all know that the, the triangle, so let me put it here. So you have here four, uh, three. So this distance is five. And you have the force P here. P, right? So if you need the components of that force P, which will be the vertical component will be this one right here. Let's call it PY. And the horizontal component on this one right here, let's call it PZ, right? So I'm moving, I'm moving this triangle down here. If you need the component PY, you just have to do P times cosine of this angle alpha, right? That will be the component in the, in the, in the Y direction. And the cosine of this angle alpha will be four over five, right? And if I want the component in the C direction, that will be um, sine of alpha, right? And sine of alpha in this case will be three over five, right? So you don't need to calculate the, the, the angle because you already have the, the if this is a, a, a right triangle, you have the, adjacent side and the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So you have the elements to calculate the, the, the cosines and the sine directly, right? You don't need to go all the way to the angles. So then P will be equals to, P is a force here, is a force that is contained within the, within the CX plane, this plane. So it doesn't have component in the X direction. So we could put here zero I. Now it has a component that is vertical going down in the Y direction. So it's a negative, a negative component in the Y direction. And it will be the magnitude of the force is here 200 times the cosine of alpha that we saw it here. So it will be times four over five, right? J, right? Agree? <clears throat> and then in the Z direction is this, this component here. It will be P, it, it will be positive that goes in the, in the correct direction or according to the Z axis, positive P, 200 by the sine of this alpha, this will be three over five, three over five in the K direction, right? So then P will be equal to zero I minus C, I believe, let's do it in a calculator when we want to make a mistake, 200 times four over five, 160, 160 J plus uh, 
André Antônio. Vamos, trio over five. 120. Okay. There you have the force P decomposed in the three components. Now let's do force Q. Q is exactly the same procedure. Also, we have a, a, a three, four, five triangle. So let's do it really quickly. It's basically the same, the same um, reasoning. So the X direction is positive for the Q and it will be Q 270 multiplied by, I can say the sine of this angle here that will be three over five, I. The Y direction is negative, right? We'll do this a component like this here. Something like this for the Q force, right? So that will be negative, negative Q 270 times the sine of that angle. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. The cosine of that angle that will be four over five. Four over five J. And this Q four is contained within the X, Y plane. So it doesn't have component in the C plane. So we will have a big zero here, K. So that's the force Q decomposed. So let's do the calculations, 270 times three over five, 162 I. Let's check is positive, yes, it's positive, minus 270 times four over five, 216 J plus zero K. So we have the other, the, the, the second force decomposed in the three components. And now the force S, this is a very easy force. The S force only have component in the X direction. No Y, no K. And the whole magnitude goes in the X direction. So you, you say S times I. So it's two, 332 pounds, 300, uh, 332 pounds I. Positive is going in the positive direction. And that's it, right? No J component, no K component. So now we need to add the components in the X in the X direction and in the Y direction. So the resultant in the X direction will be the summation of these numbers here. This, this, and this. You don't have to take the eyes because the eyes, the eye the, the, the is a common factor that we really don't need to put it there, right? We are sum making summation of all the components in the X direction. So we have here uh, zero plus 162, um, plus 332. Actually, we, we should put, put here plus zero J plus zero K. Want to be complete. So Rx will be equal to 162 plus 332 equals 494. 494. RY will be equal to the summation of this number here, this number here, and this zero here, right? Oops. So here we have minus 160, minus 216, plus zero. So 160. 216 negative 376. And then the C direction resultant in the C direction will be this value here. 
this value here and this value here. This three go away. So we have 120. Plus zero, plus zero in the Z direction. Yeah, that's it. 120. All right, what else? Determine the magnitude with three significant digits. Okay, so now we get the total magnitude by Pythagorean theorem that will be 494 square plus 376 square plus 120 square. So whatever you get in there, the three significant digits, 376 square plus 494 square equals square root of 620.82. So the answer would be 621. All right. Okay, let's go to problem number four. You guys have problem doing this problem? No questions? Okay, knowing that the tension in cable AC is 849 newtons, determine the components of the force exerted by this cable on the wall A. So we have to represent the force here by, uh, we put here some force here. So that's, let's call it the force F. Uh, the best way to go about this, when you have the coordinates of the point, of the points that give you the properties of a force, the most organized way to go is to find the, the position vector of, of the, the point towards uh, the, to, in which the force is going to, like this force is going to point C from point A. So we are going to talk about the position vector from A to C. And then we get the, the unit vector in the direction of A to C, from A to C. And then we just multiply the magnitude of the force by that vector. And then you have the, the components of the, of the force. So the best way to find the position vector from A to C is to get the coordinates of point C and subtract the coordinates of point A to get the components of the vector that goes from A to C. The coordinates of point C are in the x direction nine, in the y direction zero, because it's on the plane xc, so zero, and the coordinates of, of the, in the c direction will be 12, right? The coordinates of point A will be x zero, because it's on the plane yz zero. In the y direction six, this six here, and in the c direction four, this four here, four, right? So if you subtract those components, those coordinates one by one, you have uh, nine minus zero, zero minus six, 12 minus four. So you have the position vector from A to C is equal to nine I minus six J plus eight K. That has to be, that vector has to be how you go from A to C going through the, through the three directions. So it will be, let's see, just to check. Nine, if, you, if I'm going from A to C, if I go nine in the X direction, so that will be nine, like this, nine, nine. Then I go minus six in the Y direction, so I should be going down minus six. So this will be minus six. And then eight in the Z direction positive, this will be eight. I should be arriving at point C. That's how I check if this vector is correctly uh, found, all right? Now that you have the position vector from A to C, you find the magnitude of the vector, which is the distance from A to C, we can put it like this, is equal to a square root of nine square plus six square plus eight square, right? That's going to give you um, 81 plus 36 
plus 64, 181, 181, square root of 181, 13.454, all right? So now the unit vector in the direction from A to C, the unit vector from A to C, is equal to the direct position vector from A to C over the magnitude from A to C. So it will be equal to one over square root 181 times 9i minus 6j plus a k. right? Now, if you want the components of the force in the direction from A to C, it's just multiplying the force by lambda AC. The, the magnitude of the force multiplied by the direction. So that will be 849 newtons times lambda, which is one over the square root of 181, 9i minus 6j plus ak. All right? So let's do those operations. So I have F equals to this times this times this, 849 divided by the square root of 181 times nine, 567.95, I now minus a forty nine, eight forty nine times six divided by a square root of one eighty one, three hundred and seventy eight point sixty three J plus eight hundred and forty nine times four divided by a square root of one eighty one equals 504.85 K. So if I want to put it in the computer like this, so the three digits for this will be 568, the three digits for this will be 379, and the three digits will be 505. So that will be for my case, 5683795505. That will be the answer to enter in the computer. All right. Any questions? No questions? Everybody fall asleep already? <laughs>